Well, then you have no idea how difficult it is for Yehuda, who is so full of content and knowledge and good deads, to meet his uh, deadlines and only speak as briefly as he was asked to. So thank you, Yehuda, for the content and the very important work in terms of this poll and uh, other important areas. Uh, we will now move on to the next session, which is the first session uh, of the open uh, sessions and the concrete ones here in our conference and it is to do with the uprising and the changes or the revolutions in the Arab world and I would like to ask Dr. Anat Kurtz who is uh, the director of this who is the chair of this uh, uh, session uh, she is not only a good friend but she is also the, the director of research at the INSS and she leads the whole aspect of content and product here at INSS which you uh, obviously all uh, are reading and appreciate and I would like to use this opportunity to uh, tell her words of appreciation, although I cannot see her approaching. Oh, here she is. So please, uh, this microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Mayor. Hello, everybody. The Arab Spring, I think that there was not a session since the beginning of this conference. I think that in fact over the last 18 months or so, the terms Arab Spring, whether you it's with a reservation or without reservation, has not come up. It is a shadow that is in the background of all of our discussions. And I would like to speak briefly because I would also, because we're a bit uh, tight here in terms of schedule, but I would like to say again, I feel the need to remind you that whether you feel discomfort or um, because of this term of Arab Spring, it still felt in political circles and by the society and also by the academia ever since the uprising began in the Middle East. But after 18 months, I dare say that maybe, perhaps it is possible to identify in the margins some uh, blossoms of spring. In terms of the process, we have seen at least in two places, and as we have also said, uh, many, uh, has, many people who have uh, talked about this have said, we're not talking about a one-dimensional or monolithic approach. We're talking about a picture that we saw in both Egypt and Tunisia, the beginning, and perhaps even more than a beginning, of a de democratization process that is still valid, still maintained, the borders and boundaries of the national state. So that means that if we have used the Arab Spring as some sort of model, this inspiration is valid. And then it becomes a bit more complicated when you're going into the content level and the rise of political Islam that is um, being heard. And here, of course, we are seeing it the entire time. We see the opportunity for um, interests and conflict of interests between groups, communities, countries, tribes sometimes we find in the Middle East and the Western world. And Israel, of course, is part of this issue. And uh, we can even say that uh, Israel is at the uh, heart of this conflict that may uh, be expressed or accelerated. Um, so we have to look at this picture, look at the complexity of it. And that is what the team headed by Dr. Mark Heller um, had uh, in its, as its mission. And as part of this complexity, not only speak of the threats, and that is a tendency in uh, many times that's where we're, dis we're, we're uh, prioritizing the threats, but also subject to the main theme, to the main motif that um, um, the led the uh, preparations for this conference and identifying the opportunities, which means looking at the ways that Israel can try to translate the changes and the dynamics and the um, uh, the dynamics of, of and the changes and the revolutions in the area and make it an, a challenge. Uh, this is a, uh, this is the end of my introduction. I would like now to ask Dr. Mark Heller the head of the team at the INSS that prepared the background for this discussion to show and present his findings and the team's findings and the conclusions of the final report. Thank you very much.